Send a revival, oh Christ, my Lord. Let it go over the land and sea. Send it according to thy word, to thy dear word, and let it begin in me. It's revival time, people of God. And we thank God for reviving us again. For we know revival begins with us. And people of God, we have truly enjoyed ourselves for the past two nights. Amen. God has blessed us through our guest evangelist for the past two nights. And through his messages, we have truly been revived. Amen. So we thank God that we now have entered into our last night of our revival. And we want to make sure that we give God our best praise. Thank him for blessing us with the revival. Amen. For the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Here it is, people of God. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let me say it one more time. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. People of God, the Lord is good. He's worthy to be praised. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. It's revival time. Lord, send a revival. And let it begin with me. Let us prepare ourselves now for praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Happy Friday. Smile. Y'all don't have to go to work tomorrow. Whoever go to work. Or do you? <laughs> that don't mean nothing sad. It don't mean nothing no more. Okay. Everybody all right? All is well? Glad to be here. I'm going to say it like we say in Kentucky. One more again. One more again. All right now. I went to a funeral today. I was going to say it. Okay, all right. All right.
young lady, you come help us tonight. You can sing or play or I'm going to ask a minister Payne to come help us tonight. I'm feeling like Stephen Wonder, y'all. Praise the Lord. Give him a hand, y'all. to rather be is it it's no other place to be safer
Give God a praise. Y'all all right? Let's get one more and I'm going to be done. Uh, check one, two. Mm-hmm. Check one, two. This morning when I rose, yeah. No doubt. Oh, early this morning when I got out of my bed, yeah. I didn't have no doubt. Right early this morning. When I rose, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord will take care of me. I know the Lord will provide for me. I know the Lord lead and guide me all the way, all the way. Oh, early this morning when I rose, yeah. Jesus. 
was all over my head. Oh, I didn't have to wake up, but he woke me up this morning. Have you had? 
had a good time? Huh? All right. Somebody asked me, said, well, Pastor, why y'all just going three? I said, well, first of all, don't nobody, nobody hardly do five anymore. So I, I said, but three really is divine because we have one night for the Father. We have one night for the Son. <laughs> but that third night is for the Holy Ghost. Uh, and and you, you, you do know we were supposed to pray for the Holy Ghost, don't you? Amen. But the Holy Ghost didn't wait on us. The Holy Ghost fell Wednesday. The Holy Ghost fell Thursday. I can't wait to see what he's going to do tonight. Say yeah. yeah. Say yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. I, guess what? I'm supposed to be introducing uh, uh, Pastor Gamble, but, but tonight I'm not even going to do that. Because if you don't know him by now, if you don't know what God is able to do through him, if God hadn't spoke to your soul this this week, Amen. Maybe you need to you you need to check something out. The old folks used to say, "Come up, come up on the morning's bench." Amen. Y'all y'all remember the old revivals? Come up on the morning's bench. Amen. I, I see some see some family members in the house. Amen. Pastor Meredith Lester is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor and co-pastor Davison is here. Amen. God bless you. And again, of course, our brother, a P Pastor Walker, is here. And we thank God for him. Amen. For all of them. Amen. There is, there, there, there is uh, uh, an, an awaiting circumstance. There is an awaiting, uh, uh, what he said, uh, happenstance is going to come. And, and that is that God is going to do something miraculous in the house tonight. I just feel it in my spirit. Amen. I was in, in a funeral service earlier today in, in Nashville, and I told the family, it's all right to grieve. It's, it's all right to let your tears fall. Uh, but sooner or later, you got to leave the cemetery. Amen. Amen. Because the cemetery says that everything there is pretty much done. But when you pack up everything and leave the cemetery, that says life goes on. Amen. And, and, and that's what I wanted them to do, to, ha to have life goes on. One of the family members said that they had been planning a, uh, a family reunion. And now they had to put it on hold. And I told them, no, the devil is alive. Don't put it on hold. It's, it, it's a time for families to come together. It's a time for the new generation to know from whence we've come. A amen. And that's what this revival was all about. Tonight may be Friday night and the end of the revival, but how many of you know this is not the end of our revival? The revival is to live, to continue to live and thrive in us. There has to be, there has to be uh, some circumstances after the revival. You've heard him preach. You've heard him, heard him give him some challenging sermons. And if good hope doesn't change, if good hope does not become for the better, huh? then it's all for naught. But guess what? We'll do it all again. Praying and fasting and preaching and lifting up the name of Jesus. God dropped in my spirit that it's going to be all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. I, I might as well put you on notice. Some folk going to leave. I might as well put you on notice. Some folks going to come. I might as well put you on notice. We're going to have to knock on some doors. Somebody going to be standing back saying, ain't no need in going through all that. We just went out of the pandemic. Well, you just come out of revival. Where is your faith? Help me, somebody. God is going to do a new thing. Amen. And I, I hope you're ready. Amen. We're, we're just not here to go through the motions. We're here to make God, make, give God the glory and to move forward. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, so after we lift our offering, amen, and then we're going to uh, hear what God has to say through our pastor for the week. And then we're going to praise God and do 
go into the vineyard. Amen. Good hope you know what we've been asking. I think we asked uh, $10 per night. Let me tell you what God did. Tell it, Reverend. We said $10 per night. But I'm here to tell you, people are saying, Pastor, I'm going above and beyond. Praise the Lord. You know, you, you, people say, you got to ask. You, 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 you ask for what you want. Amen. And what, watch God put the increase. Amen. We, it's, it's not about raising the money. Amen. That's already done. But it's about putting, putting, putting your seed, amen, in the ground. We're blessing the Lord. And I thank God for you being obedient. And those who have said to the pastor, I, I, I got to do more. Amen. And we know what we, we, we can do and what we can't do. Amen. But God bless you. God has been blessed. And we know that God is going to get the glory. Amen. 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 All right. Let's lift our offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We magnify and glorify your name. For God, you are able to do anything but fail. So, Lord, we continue to bless you, the Heavenly Father, because of what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. We thank you, O oh God, that you allowed Mother Moore to walk out the hospital this morning. Thank you, Lord. But yet she's still been in revival virtually. And then she, last night she invited some of the nurses to come and watch her church. And we say thank you. Father, we know that you can do anything but fail. So, Father, bless this offering as we come to lift it up unto you. Bless this offering to Heavenly Father that it will go forth to do that which you have planned for it to do. In Jesus' magnificent name we do pray. Amen and amen. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Amen. Elevate your right hand toward the pulpit. Amen. Repeat after me. <laughs> Pastor Gamble, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. And we shall receive with our hearts, our souls, and our minds. In Jesus' name.
is the best thing that ever happened. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Happen. 
right now. Since we have had the gospel through songs, and now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. Jesus is the best that ever happened. Both of the songs, uh, God is, and Jesus is the best thing, uh, are both testimonials. Yeah, they're both testimonials. The one God is is a testimony about God and who he is. Before we talk about what he's done, we praise him. We honor him. We bless his name. We magnify him for who he is. He's God all by himself. Yes. Yes. God the Father. God the Son. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened. Ever happened to me. Yes, yes, yes. Several years ago, uh, my cousin who was read as a brother invited me to the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. For those of you old enough to remember, it's where those girls were bombed at the church. Girls lost their lives at the church. And, and he and his wife had become members of that church. And they had <coughs> invited me to come down because they were having the installation service of their new pastor. Now, this would have been about... 15 years ago, and he and they invited me to come down because I, well, I really invited myself. <laughs> I really invited, they had never done an installation service, and they had called me and asked me what was uh, proper to do in an installation worship experience. So I, I schooled them, I educated them, I cultivated their thinking concerning what was proper concerning an installation service, I helped them to do a art of service. And I said to them, since I've done all this work, y'all should just send me a plane ticket. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and they did, they did, they did, they did. They sent me the plane ticket, and a gentleman out of uh, New York, I think it was Buffalo, uh, was called to be their pastor, and he asked his pastor, uh, Dr. Walker, out of Philadelphia, who was a trained musician. He could play by music, by notes, and by ear. And he was known throughout Philadelphia and across the country as a trained musician and a preacher par excellence. And Dr. Walker got up and said this when he began his sermon. He said, nothing messes up a service worse than bad music. He said, nothing messes up a service worse than bad music. And I've been here Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night, and we have not had bad music any night. We have not had bad music any night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I were in Salvers, South Carolina, I'd see y'all some bad Negroes. If I were on the street in the hood, I'd say y'all were nasty. Yes, yes. Because music helps to set the tone for the worship experience. If folk are not likely to get into the music, they're really not likely to get into the, the message to the sermon. So we thank God for all of you who blessed us this week with your voices, your melodic voices, and with your uh, intensity. Because, you know, you really can't sing pretty. You, like, you got me. Yeah, you got to ugly up your face. You, know. you, know, you got to pull it out of here. Yeah, you can't sing pretty. You can't be primping up here and sing. You got to let it go. Let it go, let it go. I told Pastor last night, uh, Dr. Gardner Taylor, who pastored the Concord Baptist Church in Brooklyn, 
uh, and many uh, Time Magazine misnomenclatured him because Time Magazine called him the dean of black preachers. You know, Gardner Taylor was the dean of all preachers, black, white, blue, or brown. Uh, he was someone to be reckoned with. And Dr. Taylor was asked in Charlotte about 15 years ago, Dr. Taylor, what's the difference uh, between lecturing and preaching? And Dr. Taylor thought about it for a moment. He said, the difference between lecturing and preaching is a matter of temperature. It's just a matter of temperature. He said, if you're supposed to be lecturing and you sweat, you've gone too far. <laughs> and if you're supposed to be preaching and you don't sweat, you haven't gone far enough. So it's a matter of lecturing matter of temperature. The minister Porsche to Reverend Payne to Pastor Walker, Pastor Emeritus Lester, Pastor Davidson and wife to Minister Evans, Reverend Barlow and wife. Amen. I want to make sure I get that right. I was with the Reverend John Henry Youngblood out of Brooklyn. I was there about uh, 35, 40 years ago and a young lady came in with me and the gentleman who was introducing people who was beside of the worship experience he said, yeah, we were glad to have Reverend Gamble here with his wife. <laughs> now, I didn't get married until about 20 years ago. <coughs> so I started looking around, too, to see who my wife, <laughs> to see who my wife was. So you want to make sure you don't miss nomenclature, people. <laughs> yeah, particularly preachers, because you know y'all give us a hard time anyhow. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. To Pearl and to Marlene, we thank God for you. To uh, my niece and grandniece back there with her hand up on the <coughs> back there. Uh, to my nephews and Dee, uh, good to see everybody here on tonight. Good to see everybody here tonight. Now, I do want to say this to you, that uh, on the last night, uh, you know, I'm trying to come on home. Yeah, I, I won't keep you more than an hour tonight. <laughs> Reb, you sure be yourself. <laughs> I heard you, 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 I heard you. But after, uh, after all of that singing, I am, uh, I am, uh, I, I am led to recite the words of M.C. Hammer. I can't touch that, y'all. <laughs> oh, I can't touch that. Can't touch that. But thank you, Pastor. My, my brother, the under shepherd of this ministry, uh, Pastor Terrell, to leading lady, uh, Barbara, and all who've come to share with us uh, this week, these three nights in revival. And it's my prayer that uh, you've gotten something from revival. But I always teach people this, uh, that in order to get something, you need to bring something. Don't ever come to church looking for the praise team to hype you up or to get you in the mood. You ought to bring your praise with you, your worship with you uh, when you come through the door of the house of God. And, and keep this in mind that whenever we come into his house, because the house is not our house, the house belongs to him, that we are all invited guests. And when you're invited to someone else's house, you should know how to act and how to conduct yourself and how to handle yourself in his house. This is not our house. I don't care who laid the foundation. I don't care who the fathers and mothers are. This is not their house. Who the preacher or pastor might be, this is not our house. This is his house. Yeah, his house. And I'm just glad to be in his house uh, with the Good Hope family uh, this week for a few days. From Psalms 51, uh, the book of Psalms does not have chapters. The book of Psalms does not have chapters. And there are really only five books in Psalms and five divisions in Psalms. The book of Psalms does not have chapters. Uh, I want us to look at Psalm 51. And I want us to stand, please. And yeah, Psalm 51, if you, if you hear, uh, I read from a number of versions of the Bible. I've been reading for the last couple of nights from the King James Version. Sometimes I read from the New Century. Sometimes I read from the New uh, Living Bible uh, Translation, a New Living Translation. Sometimes I read from the NIV. But I'm always initially read from King James because most of our churches across this country will have the King James. I will generally read that first and the other translation after that. But tonight, I'm going to just stick with the, cham king, uh, the King James Version. Psalms 51, Psalm 51, Psalm 51. A uh, familiar passage to many of us who read our, our writ, Psalm 51, beginning at verse 10. Uh, David says, There's created in me a clean heart, 
O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You may be seated. Yeah, I want to I want to talk and teach and share uh, from this subject. What do you do when the thrill is gone? Yeah. What do you do when the thrill is gone? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. What do you do when the thrill is gone? Let us pray. God and our Father, we acknowledge that you are the only God. You're omnipresent because you're everywhere all at the same time. You're omnipotent, oh God, because you've got all power in your hand. You're omniscient because you know everything. God, you know our going up and our coming down, our rising and our falling down. We acknowledge, oh God, that it's you who woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Grandma said it best, you know more about us than we'll ever know about ourselves. So we pray now, Lord, for our worship tonight that our worship will not be in vain. Our singing, our preaching, and our teaching will not be in vain, but somebody will be benefited and will be impacted in such a way that they will want to shift the way of their thinking and change the manner of their conduct. Teach now. Preach now. Have your way in this place. Vow the potter, but we the clay mold and shape us after your own will and way. God, we be so careful to praise your name forevermore. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may they be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the children of God said, Amen. Amen. Now say it like you mean it. Amen. Amen. What do you do when the thrill is gone? Uh, that which energized you, excited you, made you get up early in the morning to be about the task, uh, that gave you exhilaration and jubilation, and cause a little chill to fall in your heart. What do you do when that which motivated you and inspired you and caused you to be about the bidding of God no longer causes you to do that? Those of us who are sitting up in here have experienced something we've never experienced before in our lives in terms of COVID-19, in terms of the coronavirus. Yeah, coronavirus shut down almost everything. Yeah. Businesses and restaurants were shut down. Places of occupations, my brothers and my sisters had to close their doors. Students were now not going to school, but going to school virtually or online because something shifted the way we did things, shifted our attitude, our mindset, and even our energy. Our contemplation was different. Our interaction was different. Our production was different because of the corona virus. And for many persons, many persons, the coronavirus stole our joy. Yeah, stole our joy. Yeah, it stopped us and prevented us and averted us and prohibited us from going about our daily activities. And let's be honest, my brothers and my sisters, let's be honest. Some folk ain't never going back to a mall. Some people never going back to a beauty salon or to a barber shop. <laughs> and gladly to see some people ain't never going back to a bar yeah. or to a strip joint. Y'all you ain't you supposed to say it up in here. Yeah, yeah, some people are never going back where they were going before to a movie theater or to the skating rink or to doing things because fear has been placed into their heart or because the joy has been removed from them. It's not just a fear of catching the, revi of catching the virus, but it's something that's in the air that's changed the mindset of people. Yeah. All of those places that listen, you can give an account of that. Not only those places people not coming back to, some folk not coming back to church. Yeah. Any pastor who decides that they are going to stop live streaming, yeah. Facebook Live, teleconference, or radio frequency, anyone who said we're going to stop and see whether they're going to come back, most of your people just go to somebody else. Go to another channel. Go to another station. Go to another teleconference. God has given us another avenue and another means 
by which his word can be preached and taught and lectured. Many of us were dealing with small congregation, but right now we can be heard in Africa. We can be heard in California. We can be heard in Kentucky. We can be heard in North Carolina. We can be heard in Nevada. We can be heard in Georgia. We can be heard in Montana. We can be heard in Wyoming. We can be heard in Wisconsin. We can be heard all over the country and all over the world. You see, what the devil meant for evil, I wish somebody would give me some praise. What the devil meant for evil, God has a way of turning a minus into a plus. God has a way. Turning a minus into a plus. That's why the writer in Romans tells us uh, that what God will do, God will do some things uh, for our good that we don't think is for our good. Paul had that dilemma, the good that I would do, I do not. And the evil that I would not do, I find myself doing. In other words, there's always a dilemma going on inside of us between light and darkness, good and bad, the right and the wrong. There's always a struggle going on inside of us. Am I in the house? And I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how righteous you are. I don't care what kind of tither you are. I don't care how long you've been with the Lord. Every now and then the devil will knock on your door. Am I right about it? Well, I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it. There's something in the air, something in the atmosphere that causes and robs us of our strength, of our endurance, and sometimes our tolerance. And something is going to arrive where we're not energized and excited as we used to be. My, my talk to some married couples, May I talk to some married couples? Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me tonight. May, may I talk to some married couples? What do you do in your marriage when the flame is about going out? No more date nights? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. No more going to the movies? No more vacation together? Come here, precious lads. When a man loves a woman. That's the eros love, where you, can't, where you can't sleep at night because of your B.I. and sweetie. Yeah, when you want to eat him up before you marry him. And after you marry, you want to spit him out. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you do when you no longer look forward to seeing him or her? There's no longer a twinkle in the eye. But what do you do? What do you do when the anticipation of the doorbell ringing mm, does not bring the kind of jubilation you had expected long years of going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the older you get, you have less need for some things. And not necessarily because you don't want to do something you can't do when you get older. Y'all going to talk to me tonight? Mm. Yeah. 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 Thrill is gone. Tiger Woods has been known to be an excellent golfer. And, and Tiger was doing pretty good until he had that accident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you look at him now, his body is giving out on him. But also the thrill that Tiger had 20 years ago is no longer there. Losing the energy, losing the focus, losing the ability to focus and concentrate. Time has wiped some stuff out. Am I right about it? Oh, I know I'm right about it. I want to knock on your door. I want to come on your aisle. People up in here remember church a long time ago. You could come to church, someone would sing a song, and everybody would join in on that song. Am I right about it? Didn't matter who sang the song. Didn't matter who was playing on the music, on the organ, on the piano, or the drum. There was a spirit in the house, and people caught a hold of the spirit in the house. And from aisle to aisle, and from pew to pew, people would raise their hands. Some people would run around the church. Some people would shout because of the power of the spirit in the house. Yeah. 
Some 30 years later, we become contemporary. Nobody want to say amen. Nobody want to shout glory. Nobody want to say hallelujah. Nobody want to clap their hand. Nobody want to stand on their feet. Nobody want to run around in the church because you might get your clothes wrinkled up. We, we're dignified now. We are intellectual now. Yeah, we don't want to lift holy hands. and We don't want to yell out because that's not cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not the mindset and the attitude and, and the response of the, of the intellectual, of the intellectual, of those who are part of the intelligentsia. Yeah, yeah, we've got to, we've got to be, we've got to be, you know, we've got to be cool now. Yeah. Yeah, we can't let anybody know from whence we've come. We can't let anybody know about our struggles, our trials, our tribulation. We can't let anybody know we came from the slum. We came from the other side of the track. We came from the cornfield. We came from the cotton field. Because you, you see, we let somebody know that, then they will think differently of us. But the devil is a liar. When the Lord has been as good to you as he's been, you ought to lift your hands. Up. Tell the Lord, thank you. Honor his name. Do his will. Serve him. With gladness. Gladness. With gladness. As a matter of fact, when God has done as much for you as he has, every now and then, you ought to be the first one to testify. Mm. You ought to be the first one to give him praise, honor, and glory, and recall from which you've come to where you are right now, to let someone know that where I am right now, I didn't get here all by myself. But somebody prayed for me. Mama prayed for me. Grandmama prayed for me. Daddy prayed for me. Pastor prayed for me. Preacher prayed for me. My relatives prayed for me. My ushers prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. To get me. To get me where I am. You ought to understand that no man or woman is an island. And wherever you are, somebody helped you. Somebody encouraged you. Somebody walked with you. Somebody mentored you. Somebody talked to you. Somebody pulled you to the side and said, you got better sense than that. Am I in the house? I am the house. I'm almost finished, y'all. Oh, I'm, I'm almost finished, y'all. I'm almost finished. What do you do, Kim? Yeah, Nick, Nick. What do you do, Payne and Walker? What do you do uh, when the thrill is gone? Come here, David. Yeah. David, would you talk to us tonight? Would you teach us? Would you share with us your struggles, your trials and tribulation, your ebbs and your flows? David, would you talk to us tonight and that we might have a firm story uh, to base our revival upon? I called David. Uh, you know he was, he was Jesse's boy. You know he was Jesse's boy. And, and Samuel went to Jesse's house uh, because a, a king was going to come out of Jesse's house. And, and Samuel looked at all the boys and he said, no, no. Are you with me, girl? <laughs> he, he said, no, not this one. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. You ain't got no more boys? Yeah. There gotta be somebody else. Yeah, I, I got a boy, he's out, he's out there in the field. Uh, bring him here. When he saw him, he knew that David was the one. Let me stop and tell you this. God knows who the one is. I don't care how people try to drag you down and try to discourage you and try to ridicule you and laugh at you and poke fun at you. God knows who the one is. I wish I had someone up in here that the Lord has shown some favor. I wish I had someone up in here that the Lord has picked you up and turned you around. I wish I had someone in here that the Lord has blessed mightily. I wish I had someone in here that the Lord reached way down. I wish I had somebody in here. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, David was the one. 
And I need you to understand that his humanity was expressed very much like our humanity. He had some good and some bad deeds. Did he not? He proved himself early, uh, Reverend Evans, to be a warrior. Yeah, that lion, yes, and that bear. He frauded both of them. He fought them. He slayed both of them. Proved himself to be a mighty warrior of God. Yeah, he had strength. He had ingenuity. And then, my brothers and my sisters, he grew up under the unction of God. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah, God had his hand. I wish I could. God had his hand. I wish I could. God had his hand on David. May I stop that? The reason why some of you has been as successful as you've been. You've had odds against you. You've had some mountains to climb. You've had some valleys to go through. You've had to deal with some giants. But the reason you survive is that the Lord had his hand on you. Is there anybody can give God praise, honor, and glory because you recognize, you realize, you understand that the Lord had his hand. Go ahead and hand. So many were falling by the wayside. But God helped you to stand and to endure. Am I right about it? I said, am I right about it? Yeah, David, David grew up, uh, my brothers and my sisters, and he became, he became a person under Saul's watch, under Saul's tutelage. But he had already proved himself mightily. You know the story? He had already slayed Goliath. You all remember that, don't you? But there's a passage in there in the story of David and Goliath that rings loudly for me. Because when he went to Saul, because the mother brother was scared. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, Goliath was, uh, was throwing out insults against them. And nobody would go down in the valley with Goliath. Yeah, daddy sent son David to check on the boys. David saw what was going on. He went to Saul and said, Saul, I'll fight him. And, and what happened was Saul tried to give him his armor. Uh -huh. Y'all, don't, don't miss this. Saul tried to put his armor on David. But Saul's armor did not fit David. Y'all, y'all missing this. You see, sometimes you are in the company of people that don't fit you. Sometimes you hang around people that don't have your same ideology. Sometimes you connect yourself with things that don't fit you. Don't take everybody to be your friend. Some people are jealous of you and trying to get close enough to you to try to get some of what you got. Am I in the house? I said, am I in the house? Some things don't fit you. May, may, may I go there? May I go there? Some clothing don't fit you. You can't wear what everybody else wear. You don't have the body. That ain't your style. Up in here, up in here. Up in here, up in here. Up in here, up in here. Yes. Is that thing on, baby? Is that thing on here? It's on. I can't play this. I can't. It don't fit me. But if it's her, if it's her, if it's Paul. Why are you trying to be the pastor when that doesn't fit you? You hadn't been called. You hadn't been licensed. You haven't been anointed. You haven't been installed. That don't fit you. Uh, you've got to understand what fits you. Your place. Your niche. Your spiritual gifts. Am I right about it? Yeah. David said it doesn't fit me. But my God... My God will see me through. Yeah, David had already proven himself. Am I right about it? 
Oh, I'm trying to let you go. David had already proven himself. And when he got into Saul's court, can't you hear now them now when they go to battle, when they go to war? And when they come back to town, the people are shouting, Saul has killed his thousands. Yeah, he's done well. But David has killed his 10,000. Mm. Yeah, in other words, his popularity had risen. But then David also got beside himself. Yeah, he allowed his eyes to betray him. One day in the palace, he looked down and he saw someone who captured his attention. Oh, Lord, she was fine, y'all. She was sure enough fine. She was fine. She was fine. She was fine like Jane Kennedy. Lord knows she was fine. She was fine like Michelle Obama. Lord knows she was fine. She was fine like a woman to put a ring on her, put a ring on Beyonce. Lord knows she was. Lord knows she was fine. And he allowed his eyes to deceive him. He allowed his eyes to play tricks on his mind and to capture his heart. And he laid with her. And he should not have done that because that was adultery. And God hates sin. Am I in the house? It doesn't matter who you are. God hates sin. Now he loves us, but he hates sin. When we go astray, he hates our going astray. But he loves us because he knows that we can be redeemed. Am I in the house? Lead with Bathsheba. Yeah, there was a brick in the wall. I hear, I hear David saying, uh, go get uh, Uriah. Tell him to come here. Yeah, he was trying to set Uriah up. Yeah, he had already slept with his wife. Brothers, he had already slept with his wife. Brothers, he had already slept with his wife. Brothers, he had already slept with his wife. Yeah, now he's trying to set Uriah up. Uh, told the man who was over the army, put Uriah on the front line. In other words, put him where he can be killed, destroyed, assassinated. So we can get rid of him because he was trying to cover up his sin. He was trying to cover up his wrong. And now David tells us mm, in Psalm 51. Teach camel, teach camel. Lord, I know I've done wrong. I'm ready for you, baby. Mm, I know I've done wrong. I know I've stepped out of the path of righteousness. Ain't God good? Psalm 51 and 3 says, Lord, I acknowledge my transgression. And I need you to understand that if you want the Lord to forgive you, you got to repent of your sin and ask the Lord to wash you white as snow. And God will, God will, God will, He will wash you white as snow. But you got to first admit that you've done some wrong. I don't know about you, but God will smile when you confess your sin and repent of your sin and say, Lord, I need you. I need your help. I need your power. I need your grace. I need your love. I need your steadfastness. God will. God will. God will. He'll wipe this plate clean. Am I right about it? I said, am I right about it? I wish I had me a praying church. I wish I had me a worshiping church. I wish I had me a living church. I wish I had me a breathing church. God will, God will, God will, God will, he'll forgive you. David said, I lost my joy, but I'm asking the Lord to purge me with his help. God will, God will, God will, he'll purge you. And David said, make me, make me, to hear the joy and the gladness. Ain't God good? The joy and the gladness. Don't hide your face from me. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? But create, create in me a clean heart when you've lost your joy and lost your way and lost your direction. Say to the Lord, create in me a clean heart. My heart is marred. My heart is dirty. My heart is filthy. My heart is
is in trouble, but if you're creating me a clean heart, God will, God will give you a clean heart and give you a right spirit, a new spirit, a different spirit. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? Don't cast me away from you, but hold me, hold me, rock me, shake me in the palm of your hand. Ain't God good? And restore, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Come here, Shirley Caesar. When the Lord restores you, you'll find yourself singing like Shirley did. This joy, this joy, this joy that I have. The world, I said the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Is there anybody who can declare the joy of the Lord is my strength. God will give you joy in the morning, joy at noontime, joy in the afternoon, joy in the midnight hour. God will give you joy for your troubles, joy for your sorrow, joy for your sickness. Ain't God good? And when the Lord restores your joy, David said, then I have a responsibility. I must teach transgressors your ways. In other words, I must tell somebody, the Lord is good, and the Lord is good all the time. And God will, God will, God will take care of you, and God will see you through. Is there anybody want their joy back? Is there anybody want their joy back? Is there anybody want their joy back? I dare you to praise him. I dare you to honor him. I dare you to magnify his name. I dare you to serve him. I dare you to love him. I dare you to worship him. And God will, 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 he'll restore. He'll restore. He'll restore you. He'll restore you. David admitted that he had done wrong. And he had enough sense to ask the Lord to purge him, to cleanse him, to make him whole, and to give him back what he had. Don't be so arrogant. Don't be so bold. As to recognize that you've done something to cause the joy to leave. Rectify with that. Change that and alter that and watch God move. Watch God move in your life, with your family, in your business, in your church. Watch God move. I know he will. And after he moves, then you must tell others that everything good that happened to you, help me, Holy Ghost, everything good that happened to you, God did it. Give him a hand of praise up in here. Give him a hand of praise. I didn't say give me a hand of praise. Give God a hand of praise. Up in here, up in here. But in 
the storm don't cease and the wind keeps on blowing in my life my soul has been Stand at jar. The doors of the church stand open. Lord, the time of discipleship is now. If you've not given your life to Christ, there's no better time than right now. If you've strayed away, the thrill has been lost. You've not 
as attentive as you used to be. You're not as faithful as you used to be. You're not as cooperative as you used to be. You want to renew your relationship with him. There's no better time than right now. Uh, while the blood is running warm in your vein, in your conscious of the reality of Christ, why don't you come? Me. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Say, Lord, I yield, I yield. Me. Oh, I can hold out no longer. I want you to be my Lord and my God. The oh. Savior of my soul. Dictating my going out and my coming in. And he will deliver me. He will. He will. All I oh, see yes. to do is, is the one tonight. Praise up in here. Give God a hand of praise. Give God a hand of praise. Yes, Lord. He's able, ready and available to deliver you. He's listening. He's waiting. You're not waiting on him, but he's waiting on you. Genesis, there's a concept called Imagio Dei. And Imagio Dei simply means we were created in the image of God. And one of the things that separates us from other beings is that God gave us a will and the ability to make a decision, ability to make a choice. You can choose God, you can choose the devil. Am I right about it? You can choose the straight and narrow road, or you can choose the broad road. But you have a choice. You can live a godly life. Or you can live a sinful life. But the choice is yours. If you need prayer, won't you come to the altar? Perhaps you don't need the prayer. But you want to stand in the gap for somebody else. Perhaps you don't need the prayer. But you want to intercede for somebody else. Won't you bring them to the altar? Bring their names to the altar. He's able. I said he's able. He's able. He's able. Everything might be all right at your house. Why don't you pray for the house next door? The house down the street. The house across the river. The house across the road. He's able. 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 Softly, 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 softly. Why don't you pray with me? God our Father. Here we are gathered around the altar, men and women alike, young and old alike, gathered around your altar. We've come to the ecclesia tonight. We've come to the church tonight. We've come where the body of believers have gathered to lift up your name, to praise you, to honor you, to bless your name. We've come to receive an instruction that we might tell somebody on our jobs tomorrow as we talk to them in the night, as we go on our vacations next week. In the name of Jesus, you have God educated us tonight. You've cultivated our thinking. You've warmed our hearts. You've blessed our souls. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your sung word, for your read word, for your preached word, for your prayed word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody tonight is standing in the gap for somebody. Some boy, some girl, some son, some daughter, some mother, some father, 
some wife, some husband, some employer, some employee, but they've come standing in the gap. So right now, Lord, right now, Lord, move as only you can move. Touch as only you can touch in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to be lifted out of the mark and mire. Somebody needs to understand you're still a healer. You're still a deliverer. And in the name of Jesus, heal somebody right now. Move right now. Deliver right now. Set free right now in the name of Jesus. God, somebody came around this altar not to ask you for anything. But when they look back over their life and they see how good you've been, how kind you've been, how loving you've been. Somebody came just to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been mighty, 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 mighty good to us. Thank you, Lord, for a roof over our head. Thank you, Lord, for clothes on our back. Thank you, Lord, for a job to go to. Thank you, Lord, for a car to drive. Thank you, Lord, for children who love us. Thank you, Lord, for a pastor who appreciates us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, you've been mighty, 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 mighty good to us. For danger seen and unseen, you brought us over, you brought us under, you brought us to. Thank you, Lord, for wrapping your loving home around us and keeping us and sheltering us and saving us. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus took his head, hanging a lot to his shoulder, said goodbye, oh well, I ain't got time. But on the third day morning, he got up, he got up, he got up with all power, all power, all power, all power, all power, all power in his hand. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the example. Thank you, Lord, for his saving power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing him to be our Savior and our Lord. Answer every prayer request. In your time, in your timing, heal everybody. In your time, in your timing, set someone free right now in the name of Jesus. And let them know there's nobody but you, Lord. Lord, we'll praise you forevermore. In Jesus' name, we offer this prayer. In Jesus' name, we express our gratitude. In Jesus' name, we shall glory. We shall glory. We shall glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody tell the Lord. Tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Lord.
this week and we say thank you we give God the glory we give God the honor and we certainly praise him that your schedule were able to squeeze us in <laughs> I, I heard somebody say that's good squeezing <laughs> amen he, he practically got off a plane jumped on a plane to Nashville to come to pour into our souls. And we definitely, definitely say thank you. Amen. We say thank you to all of you who had a hand in extending hospitality to him, taking him to lunch, feeding him. Amen. We say thank you. Amen. When you didn't have to do it. Amen. Thank you so very much. I want to also thank God for the presence each and every night of our Mother Emeritus Johnson and Brother Johnson. Amen. Sister Duncan. Amen. It gives my heart joy to see them walk in the door. Amen. When they live so far away, but they love the Lord enough to come. And be on time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and be on time. Amen. But we thank, we thank each and every one of you who've come each night, amen, to lift up holy hands and to give God praise for what he is doing here at Good Hope Baptist Church. Amen. We just say thank you to Lady Terrell. We thank you. Amen. We know you got another title this week. Amen. Leading lady. Leading lady. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So when she comes in the house from work, is that my leading lady? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Thank God for Cracker Barrel. <laughs> God bless you. But we have had a wonderful time. Amen. This week again. Uh, uh, our good friend, amen, Emeritus uh, Lester, we thank you for being here this evening. God bless you. Yeah. Pastor Don Davidson, Lady Davidson, God bless you. Amen. And Brother Walker, amen. What could we have done without you? Amen. You allowed us, allowed us to use, amen, your praise team, so we thank you. Amen. God, has dropped, God just dropped it in my spirit that one time, one of these days in the future, we ain't going to need nobody to borrow their praise team. Because we're going to have our own praise team. If it ain't nobody but me. 
Uh oh. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> oh, just. Crosswords. That's right. Crosswords. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crosswords. Crosswords. Amen. Crosswords. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let me let me say this. You know, we are living in a time now where we have to be ever so careful. Amen. And that's to include the house of God. Amen. People are so wild and evil and hateful. You can't walk down the streets anymore without fearing being shot. A amen. A and we take precautionary measures here at the church in order to uh, make sure everybody is safe. Amen. We have cameras and hidden cameras and people are on watch. Amen. And uh, we have to lock the doors when nobody's out there. Somebody's supposed to be out there all the time. But oftentimes we lock the doors and people come, you got to knock on the door. Make sure you lock, lock, knock hard now because we might be up in here throwing down. In, <laughs> huh? Amen. Uh, but we thank God for those measures and we apologize if it's inconvenience for you. Amen. But we're just trying to be safe. Amen. Amen. So we can praise the Lord in liberty. Amen. Amen. All right, if all hearts and minds are satisfied, any announcements? Amen. We're going to have pastor come and close out for us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Saturday at what time? Yeah. Uh, Saturday tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 It's free. All right. God bless you. Amen. All right. As he comes, let's give him a hand. Round of applause. Amen. God bless you. Uh, this coming uh, December 18th, my wife and I would have been married 30 years. Um, in 1993, we uh, vacationed and we took our honeymoon in Freeport, Bahamas. And we went to a church there. Uh, the pastor there was Sobe Kemp. Uh, his brother is in the States. He made a song entitled. Friday night just got paid. Y'all remember that song? Yeah, yeah that, that's Sobe Kemp. That's Sobe Kemp's brother. And Sobe told me he was going to be in the States in 94. And I invited him to New Ebenezer to come and preach for us. He was in North Carolina and he preached for us in 94. We went back to him because he invited us back uh, to Freeport in 95 to preach for them in Freeport. And that was the first time I'd seen a praise team ministry in Freeport, Bahamas. And I brought about 30 of my people with me. And when we got back to South Carolina and to Florence, uh, someone said, well, Pastor, can we get a praise team, get a praise team? I said, let the pastor pray about it. Let the pastor pray about it. <laughs> we prayed about it for several weeks, and we initiated a priest a praise team about 1995, 96. Uh, and we didn't use the deacons until our watch night services because we didn't use them to raise hymns, and hymns anymore. We used the praise team. And not that they were outdated, uh, but we wanted to put them in another spot. Yeah, yeah, that's the first time I'd seen a praise team when I was in, preached in Freeport, Bahamas in 1995. About 25 years ago, <coughs> the Reverend Dr. A.C. Robinson had invited me to preach a service for him in December. Now, y'all get snow up here pretty often, don't you? Y'all get snow up here every now and then? Well, we, got it, we, we get it every, 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 every now and then, okay? And the morning he had, and the, the day he had invited me, Pastor, uh, it snowed. It snowed, it snowed. And you all know black people don't go to church in snow. <laughs> As a whole, black people don't go to church. If it rained too hard, black, what y'all doing here? Y'all didn't know it rained today? Y'all didn't know it rained today? <laughs> <laughs> but black people, you don't go to church when it snows. And I preached in my morning service. We have a service at 7.30 and 10.30 every Sunday morning. And I said to, uh, to him when I went to him this afternoon, I said, Doc, how was, how was the crowd today? Or how, no, how was the church? How was the house today? He said, man, it was full. It was full. I said, it was full? 
I said, you mean every pew was full? He said, I ain't say that. <laughs> he said, the Holy Ghost showed up. Right. And whenever the Holy Ghost shows up, yeah. the place is full. Yeah. The place has been full on Wednesday night, yeah. Thursday night, and tonight. Because the Holy Ghost, the paraclete, showed up. Yeah. When he shows up, he not only breaks yokes, he destroys yokes. Changes attitudes and minds and mindset. Thank you for the atmosphere to our musicians and to our ensemble, all of our ushers, all of our deacons and officers, and all the members of Good Hope. Thank you for allowing us to come. And visitors to Sufis to share with you one more time. Let's always pray for each other. Let's always pray for each other. Let's pray for one another. I heard uh, the late G. Patterson say on one occasion if everything is going all right in your house, why don't you pray that everything goes all right in my house? God is able. Let us stand to our feet. justice and love, rest, rule, and abide your hand for now and forever.